I put the Yeti Tundra 45 through a series of tests alongside the Arctic 45, the Amazon Commercial 45 quart cooler, and the Igloo BMX 52 coolers. I tested these coolers each for their capacity, durability, ease of use, as well as their insulation and ice retention. At the end of my tests, I even cut all of these coolers in half to see what differences there were on the inside. I discovered the truth about the Yeti Tundra 45 and I'm gonna share with you everything I found out right now. Yeti is basically the original popular rotomolded cooler. If Yeti comes out with a 45 quart cooler, there's gonna be a ton of other cooler companies that follow the same. So the coolers I tested here are all 45 quarts except for the Igloo, which is 52 quarts. But each design is different, so I wanted to see how much I could load into each of these coolers. The Yeti Tundra 45 fits 54 cans of your favorite beverage, but if you need to know anything about Cooler Bill, is that he likes his beverages frosty. So loading up on 54 lukewarm cans, it's just not gonna cut it. So that is 54 cans right there loaded. You can see it's not fully optimized there. Good space for some ice. So you could probably chill these actually a little bit because there's like a little bit of room for these to move around, but you could chill them down a little bit. But yeah, it's 54 cans, could not get 55 in here anyway. So there you go. But with seven pounds of ice, the Yeti Tundra holds more like 40 cans, which is enough to hold over Cooler Bill for a night, you know, just one night. But the number of cans only tells part of the story. Now, each of the coolers I tested, they have subtle design differences so that even though they carry the same liquid capacity, you can actually store more in some compared to others. Now, the best way I found to quantify this is called space efficiency. So I loaded up the three coolers as much as I could to see how much they could hold. As you can see, the Igloo BMX 52 performed the best in terms of how much it can store relative to its size. The Igloo 52 not only has more liquid capacity, but it's also more efficient with that space as well. So it's really the roomiest of the coolers. I'd say that if you have a five person family and wanna do an overnight or like a two day trip, then that bit of extra room, it's gonna really come in handy. The Igloo it has markedly less insulation compared to the other three coolers I tested, which you're gonna see when I cut them all in half. However, the Yeti Tundra 45 was the second most efficient with its space, and it had the most efficient design of all the 45 quart coolers. Amazon's design was decent and could hold a lot of cans. Arctic's design, a little bit clunky, holds less, and it weighs a good deal more. For the insulation, I placed seven pounds of ice in each at the same time, and I measured their temperature with a probe continuously for 100 hours. I did this in my my garage in summer, so the ambient temperature was generally right around 85 to 90 degrees for the three days that I took the measurements. Here's my data from my insulation tests. I wanted to make sure the conditions were exactly the same, so I just tested them all at the same time. I didn't open any of the coolers at any point during this test, but I did occasionally give them a little jiggle just to see if they were still holding ice. In the graph on the screen now, the blue line represents the Yeti Tundra 45. As you can see, it performed much better than the other coolers in this test. Here's a closer look. The Yeti Tundra 45 held under 40 degrees for 71 hours, so you could definitely camp for two to three days and still hold your steak safely for the final night's dinner. I should also note that over Christmas we ran out of room in the fridge and I stored the meat for the Christmas dinner in the Yeti Tundra for like 10 days straight and there was still ice in the cooler and that was in my garage. So 71 hours definitely applies when the heat and humidity is up and this was done in North Carolina in the summer so if it's cold outside these coolers are as cold as the void of space. Under the same hot conditions, my Yeti held its temperature below 50 degrees for 86 hours. That's three days of frosty beverages. I don't have a great test for durability, so I just filled them with some ice and dumped all these coolers off of a ladder. Science. In terms of durability, the Yeti Tundra, it definitely feels great. I still don't have an excellent test for this metric, but I doubt that there's anything you're gonna do that's gonna break this thing down. After all, like a bear can eat it, so that's good. The same is true for Arctic and the Amazon coolers. And based on the feel of these coolers, it's clear that the Igloo BMX right here, 52, it's the, it has the thinnest plastic and it has the least robust fittings. In my experience, there's no appreciable difference between the Yeti, the Amazon, and the Arctic. They're all rotomolded, and with that, you get a tank-like durability. So you saw me drop all the coolers off the ladder. And honestly, they all did pretty well. So you could, if you wanna drop it off the ladder, you can do that. Ease of use is really about how easy this thing is to lug around. Now I'd say the Igloo BMX 52 is probably the easiest to get around and the Yeti here comes in second. The Arctic, definitely the worst. The Igloo weighs in at just over 16 pounds. After that, there's a significant eight pound leap to the roto molded coolers. So if you're getting a roto molded cooler for the better insulation and better durability, you're gonna have to sacrifice on the weight for sure. I hope you're hitting the gym, Cooler Bill is. The Arctic is almost five pounds heavier than the Yeti, which is actually a pretty big deal, especially when you start loading these coolers with ice, frosty beverages. It just gets heavy, man. All of the rotomotive 45 quart coolers I tested, they all have these little rope handles right here. The Igloo is the only one that doesn't have. It has hard handles, which is my preference actually when the coolers are fully loaded and heavy. However, 
This rope handle does make it a lot easier for two people to carry, so it makes sense why they'd all have a rope handle. But personally, I'm the kind of person who purposely denies help so I can show off my manliness and hurt my back. I like the Amazon Cooler's latch system the most. The rubber T-handles on the Yeti right here, they perform well, but to me, the Amazon latches, they make the most sense. They're easier to use, but they do kind of, when you try and shut it, they always get stuck in the middle. The Yeti Tundra comes with a dry goods basket, which I really appreciate. It's the only cooler that I got that comes with an accessory already. Now, I like this drain plug at the bottom. Gotta have that. It's always handy when you're camping for a few days. You don't want to try and tip the cooler over. And again, I mean, I like to hurt my back, but if you don't, then you're gonna want one of these. You get two spaces to add padlocks on the corners. I absolutely love the rubber feet on the bottom, so you can put these on a boat. These are all pretty standard features now across the board. I mean, Yeti was the first one to do them pretty much always. But the Amazon, the Igloo, they both have fish rulers. So if you can't help yourself and you always want to measure fish, then yeah, you want to get one of those. So now that we know everything there is to know about how the Yeti Tundra performs, let's cut it in half and let's see why it's lighter and has better insulation compared to the other cooler brands that I tested. Sweet, I'm ready to cut this thing in half. Like Cooler Bill always says, safety first. Let's get this opened up and take a look on what's on the inside. And wait, what the heck are these? Of course, these are two pairs of American-made merino wool socks. Apparently, these keep your feet dry and comfortable for a full 14-hour shift. These are Camel City Mill socks. They're designed specifically for guys who work tough jobs and have sweaty feet. So if you struggle with sweaty feet and your work boots, tend to get damp, moldy, or if your feet just get swampy and uncomfortable at the end of a work shift, then you're gonna love these socks. This is the lightweight in black. They also have the lightweight in gray. These are made with iron side merino wool, which is a special fiber that allows Camel City Mill to put a ridiculous 10 year guarantee on their socks. This pair, 10 years. These are also made in North Carolina, so you're getting a 100% USA made product. Beyond that, these socks have some light compression through the arch and the calf, so your feet feel refreshed after working a 14 hour shift. So get a pair of the best selling Camel City Mill lightweight wool work socks. You can get them in black or in gray using the link in the description down below. All right, that was awesome. Now let's actually get this thing opened up and take a look at what it looks like on the inside. All right, so I ended up cutting three in half. I didn't cut the Arctic in half. I knew that one I wasn't gonna end up really recommending uh, because it just didn't perform as well in the insulation. It was a little too heavy. So it's the one I'm gonna end up keeping for some reason, even though it's like my least favorite. Anyway, that's how Cooler Build does. Now brief overview of what we got here. This is Yeti, the Igloo, and the Amazon. The Amazon actually ended up having the most amount of insulation, but I think the way it's distributed means uh, for, for whatever reason, the Yeti did perform the best. So the insulation in here, there must be something special about the insulation going on in the Yeti because it did perform better in those ice tests despite having less insulation. Like the Amazon even has like three inches of insulation here or like 2.75 inches of insulation on the sides and on the top. Whereas the Yeti has three inches of insulation on the top but it's about two inches everywhere else. So I think that's what I'm noticing here is when I'm comparing all of these coolers together, Yeti has the most like uniform uh, insulation. Igloo has the least uniform insulation uh, and the Amazon has the most, but it is not completely uniform. So that might also have something to do with it. Another thing that's really important to note is that the Amazon and the Yeti both have this rubber gasket, which you can see right here. That helps a lot keeping the air you know, out or keeping the air in. The Igloo does not have that at all. So that's another reason why the Igloo did not perform nearly as well as these Rotomola coolers. Uh, something a little more premium, it's gonna have that rubber gasket. I think if you want a cooler that's gonna keep your stuff cold for a long time, you're gonna need that rubber gasket for sure. To sum it all up, I do think that the Yeti Tundra 45 is the best cooler of the bunch. Now it performed the best in my insulation and ice retention tests, plus it was more lightweight and comfortable than all the other rotomolded coolers. However, if you wanna save a few bucks, then you might wanna check out the Igloo BMX 52, which I've done a full review of right here. You can watch that video now and I'll see you then.